Welcome to this YSL Microsoft Excel tutorial. In this part of the series, we're going to cover the basics of the switch function. So this fairly short video will start with a quick example of using the basic switch function to compare a value against a list of numbers. We'll then perform a similar example using text values instead of numbers. And then at the end of the video, explain how you can modify the switch function to allow you to write logical tests within it. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a list of the top 50 highest grossing movies. And as usual, if you want to follow along with the video, I'll drop a link in the description below so that you can download the same data that I'm working on here and follow along with me if you'd like to. So this video is all about the switch function. And we're going to treat the switch function as an alternative to perhaps using nested if functions or indeed the ifs function. The job of switch is it allows you to take a value and compare it against a list of values, returning a related piece of information. So to demonstrate that, what we're going to do first of all is create a description for our films based on their Oscar success. I'm going to focus only on the Oscar wins column for this example. The switch function works best when you've got one single value to look at. So I'm going to look at the Oscar wins and I'm going to check if it's exactly equal to zero, then the film is a loser. If it's exactly equal to one, then the film's a single winner. And then for everything else, the film's a multiple winner. So of course, we don't need the switch function to do this. We could achieve this using nested if functions. So a quick look at what that would look like. The if function's got a logical test, answer if true, answer if false. So we could check if the value of the Oscar wins is equal to zero, then it's a loser. Otherwise, we could nest another if function asking if the Oscar wins is equal to one. It's a single winner. And then for everything else, it must be a multi winner. If you don't like nested ifs, you could use the ifs function instead. So this time we've got a single function to use and we just write our sequence of logical tests one after the other. If it, I2 is equal to zero, it's a loser. If it's equal to one, it's a single winner. And then for everything else, we can use this true value as a placeholder, as like a, a sort of a pseudo default parameter. And for everything else, it would be a multi winner. Now we've seen the if and oh, sorry, the ifs and the nested if functions in previous videos. So let's have a look at how switch is different. With switch, you start by referring to the value that you want to compare against the list that you're then about to provide. So the very first argument points the switch function to cell I2. And then the next argument is the first value that you want to compare the value of I2 with. So if I2 is equal to zero, then you write the answer that you want to return, in this case, loser. Then you write the next value you want to compare I2 with. So if it hasn't matched the first value, it looks at the next value in the list, which would be number one, and then it would return single winner. And then for everything else, we've got a default answer parameter, which in this case will be multi winner. So let's put that into practice. Let's put that into our worksheet. If we head over to cell L2, and then I'm going to say equals switch. So first of all, we, we point to the cell containing the value we want to compare against our list. So I'm going to point into cell I2. And then the first value that I want to check that I2 is equal to is the value zero. If that's true, then I want to return the word loser. Then a comma, then the next number and the next value, which will be the number one. And then in this point, we could enter the word uh, single winner. And then another comma. Now we could go on to a value three. You can put in up to 126 different values and answers. But when you get bored of or run out of specific values to test for, you can provide the default answer, which in this case is going to be multi winner. If we then close the round brackets and then hit enter, We'll see that because that's number three, it goes to the default answer and gives us multi winner. Fill that formula downwards and we get our combination of losers, single winners and multi winners. You can also use the switch function to work with text or date values. And just to quickly demonstrate that, I'd like to create a new column which provides a full name for the certificate awarded to each film. So U would be universal, PG would be parental guidance, and so on. So to do that, I'm going to create a new column header in cell M1. I'll call this one the certificate name. And then we will use the switch function to work out which certificate name we need to apply. So I'll say equals switch. 
and then point it to the cell containing the value that I want to compare with my list. So that's J2 in this case. Then the first value I'm going to look for, I'm going to look for the value U. And that's text, so it needs to be wrapped up in some double quotes. If that's true, then the value I want to return is the full word universal. Then a comma, then the next value in the list that I want to compare, so I want to check if it's PG. And if that's true, then I want to return parental guidance. And then another comma, then the next value, let's go 12A. And that would be, I'll call that one at 12 or above. And then the next one will be 15. And then I'll call that one 15 or above. And then one more to check for. I don't think there are any 18 rated films in the list, but I'm going to include it anyway and say 18 or above. And then just in case there's a certificate name in that list that I don't recognize, I'll use the default parameter to say something like unknown. Then I can close the round brackets and hit enter. 12 or above for 12a. Fill that formula down the list and get a sensible description for each certificate based on its abbreviation. Now, one of the nice things about the switch function is it means you don't have to write full logical tests. So as we saw earlier on in the first examples, if I wanted to use if or ifs, I'd have to check if this cell equals this value, if this cell equals this value. Whereas with the switch function, once you've pointed to the cell, you can just list the values you want to, to check for. You don't have to write a full logical test for it of this type. One limitation of the switch function, though, is if you want to use it in that way, you can only use the equal to operator. So every value you write in your list of values is essentially compared with an equal to. What if you did want to use switch to perform more elaborate logical tests? So say, for example, if I look back at my list of movies, I wanted to create a description for my films based on their runtime in minutes. It's an example we've done a few times in previous videos. So if the runtime was less than 100, then it's short, between 100 and 150, it's medium, and so on. With a basic switch function, I can't do that. What I'd have to do for the switch function is I'd have to say uh, equals switch D2, and then list out all of the individual numbers that would equate to short. So zero, short, one, short, two, short, and so on. And then when I get to 100, then it could be medium. But that's incredibly tedious and I'm likely to run out of parameters before I run out of values I want to test for. So how do we force switch to allow us to evaluate proper logical tests? Well, the trick is to replace the value that you're comparing, not pointing to a single cell or using a single value, but to replace it with the logical value true. What that means you can then do, if the first value to match isn't a specific value like 0 or 1, it can be a full logical test. So in this case, it might be D2 less than 100. So if that's true, so if the result of that expression is equal to the value you're comparing with, then you'll return whatever the next answer is. So in this case, it would be short and then so on. Now, it's a bit of a faff to do this, and there are far better, easier options if this is the sort of thing you want to do. Nested if functions or the ifs function make this much, much easier. But let's have a quick look anyway, just in case you need to do this. So I'm going to create a new column in the original worksheet. Let's call this one length. And we'll say equals switch. And then the expression, the thing I want to, to evaluate against my list, is the value true. Follow that with a comma, and then I can say d2 less than 100. And if that's true, provide the word short. Then a comma, D2 less than 150. And if that's true, I'll return the word medium. Let's spell it correctly. There we go. And then D2 less than 200. And that would be long. And then I can default my, my final answer to the value epic. So I'm going to assume that everything else would be 200 or more. So if I enter that and then fill that formula downwards, we can see a sensible description for each film based on its runtime in minutes, forcing the switch function to allow you to write proper logical tests. So there you go. There's the basics of working with the switch function in Excel. Hope you found that short video useful. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.